Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here. Back to complete the blood ritual of the stone crow. Wake the sleeper and see if maybe he can introduce me to the many-mouthed mother of madness in the vanishing of Ethan Carter. You know, Prospero, I'm really, really starting to question your motives here. I'm not gonna lie. All the evidence that we have gathered here in this graveyard and the surrounding town and the forest outside the town really seems to suggest that maybe, just maybe, it's best for everyone if this Ethan Carter kid stays lost. Like, if he never gets found, I think I think it's it's best for everybody here. But no, no. Apparently, Paul Prospero here went to the Miskatonic School of Private Detection, and he just doesn't know when to let that which man was not meant to know remain unknown. No, no, he's going to go poke around on it. You toss him a copy of the Necronomicon, he's going to read it. He's going to keep probing its depths, going to keep picking at it, wiggling it around like a kid with a loose tooth. Just, you know what, Paul? Stop picking at that loose tooth, man. It's going to get infected and fall out. And you know what? Call me crazy, Prospero, but you don't want to have to get that tooth replaced. That shit is expensive, and you don't exactly seem like the sort of guy who would have top-notch dental coverage. Dental implants, man. Expensive. It's like, do your wallet a favor, Paul. Just leave this one the hell alone. Leave it the hell alone. The Carter kid is missing. You know what? So what? Who gives a shit? His whole family wanted him dead. Does that carry absolutely no weight with you in the maybe dead is better kind of thing? You got to get Fred Gwynn in Pet Cemetery on this and just say, sometimes dead is better. Also, why does my Fred Gwynn from Pet Cemetery sound a little bit like Bane from The Dark Knight? Oh, Batman, sometimes dead is better. In your case, all the time. Oh. Honestly, my bane is terrible. But you know what? I'm still, I'm not kidding about the tooth, though, Prospero. That shit is going to set you back like three grand, dog. Just, you know what? Let this Carter kid thing, just let it be, man. Treat it like, uh, treat it like a Beatles tune and just, just let it be, Paul. Let it be. So we're looking for a busted lantern, which we had a little vision told us was somewhere in this chapel, like lying scattered on a floor. It's probably over in that direction. This chapel is very dark. They're doing some pretty cool stuff with the lighting, though. The shaders look really good. What's over here? A um, whole lot of nothing. It's real dark back here, so we can't really see shit. Uh, I just heard the crackling thrum of the many-mouthed one. The mother of many mouths is calling to us from the darkness. Hello? Hello? Mother? Is that you? Have you seen Ethan? If you seen him, you know what? Tell him I said I hope he stays fucked off. Actually, I'm pretty sure that lantern... Yep, here it is. Base of the thing. We're going to inspect this. All right, so we have a broken lantern. I suppose we'll take that. What did that accomplish for us exactly? Not much. Can we go up these stairs? Well, we can, but only a very short way because they are broken. So, we got a busted lantern. Do we have, like, an inventory system or anything? Can we actually... I don't think we have any way to access these items that are in our inventory. I think we just get prompted to use them at the appropriate moment. So, is there anything else we missed in this chapel back here? I can't help but notice that, like, the... What is this? Like, the narthex of the church, I think is what this little area is called. The pulpit. There's typically an altar or some other votive object back there. This one seems suspiciously empty. Like, whatever this was a temple to has subsumed its altar and taken it back into the hoary nether dimension from whence it came. It got violently sucked through the portal into the outer world when the many-mouthed one tried and failed to come through last time. But, you know, don't worry. We're going to go complete the ritual to make sure that she completes her entrance into this realm this time. So we've got the oil lamp. It's, it says, yep, it wants us to uh, fix it. Done. Okay. Do I just take it now? What do I do with it now? It's fixed. Can I have it? Clearly not. Okay. Curiouser and curiouser, said Alice. Yeah, I'm still working on the crow thing. Do you mind? I know it's over here. I'm gonna I'm going. I got the stone crow. Let's go put it back on the thing. And then if we pull this lever, we're going to get, like, drinking crows, drinking blood here. Oh. 
That seems like an overly elaborate way to start a fire. Couldn't we have just flicked a cigarette lighter at that? Paul Prospero, you like, you probably smoke, right? Oh, well, I guess we know what they used to kill those crows with then. Some nice blood scrawls on the wall. Um, inspect dude or knife first. Let's check out the dude. Cause of death. Yeah. Call me the chest, the facial cut, shallow, minimal bleeding. Blood streaks, some wound on his back, a single attacker, multiple attackers. Boy, this Prospero is just full of questions, isn't he? So what if we touch the knife? Uh-huh. I'm sensing a theme here. The ritual of the stone crows are really working the crow motif pretty heavily. So we got the knife. If we touch, does that make this bigger? Um, no, not really. So now what? There's no blood on this guy. Is there anything else? You know, you say there's no blood, but as I'm walking around, I can hear my feet slapping around in what very much sounds like a puddle of fucking blood. And so we've got a crow knife. What if we pull this again? Does this go out? Nope. Gonna restart the fire. Well, I mean, the fire's probably already pretty good. Can we... What if we touch this man again? Nope, we're just gonna get the same vision of his death. Okay. So we have to go find more objects then to figure out what happened to Jimmy the dead guy. Wheelbarrow. We've already inspected you. Um, oh, here we go. So we've got the dagger now. We can bring it over to where the crows were murdered. Did that help us somehow? I mean, it made the little gasping sound, which means that, you know, something has happened. What's the purpose of the oil lamp? We got a wheelbarrow, an oil lamp. I mean, we got the gasping sound, which means this should be bigger. Is it big enough to figure out what happened? Apparently it is. It's the world's easiest mystery. It's a mere two-parter. All right, I'll take it. Well, we already know how this goes then. We got to follow the will of the wisps and they're going to tell us a little bit of story. So could you say that each one of these is a wisp of the plot? <laughs> uh, I hate myself. Okay, what do we got going on here? Okay, so this lady, you're new, ma'am. Who are you? And this dude who we, I don't think I've seen before, although looks a little bit like Travis. Maybe that's Ethan's dad. And he's, someone is leaning down to clutch at their face while lantern lady and ominous dude with the really lantern jaw and titanically huge... You had a real, like, one, you had a big nose, and I don't want to fire shots at big nose, folks, but you also got a very, like, sloping Neanderthal-esque brow, sir. Got more story up in that direction. All right, why is it nighttime suddenly? The moon is out. The oil lantern is gone. Intriguing. Okay, we got more wisps of story over here. So... These two are meeting in a graveyard, all right. A late night tryst, perhaps? Is this young love? Neither one of these two people seems particularly young. Also, if you guys as adults are, you know, sneaking off to the graveyard to get your bone on, you know what? Grow up, man. You got a bed. It's more of a teenage sort of thing. And they're wandering off into the woods then, so we should go off into the woodly direction. What am I looking for here? Is there another wisp of story I missed? What the hell is that noise? It sounds like a wolf is having a very unpleasant... Oh, shit, I accidentally walked away from it. So I got outside the area. Apparently there's a son of a bitch. So we can only stay in Ghost World for so long before we accidentally come out of Ghost World. I should have counted the wisps. All right, let's go poke the dead guy again so we can have another hoary vision of the great beyond. Come on, dead guy. Stop screwing around with me this time and just give me the things, will you? So which one did I miss? Oh, is there one over here? There's one over here.
All right, so now we got to figure out the chronology. So wait, these dudes are fighting? Who's fighting here? Uh, this who's this bald guy? Where did Baldy come from? Uh, this is definitely not one. That might actually be last. Let's let's put that one as number five. I'm pretty sure he got stabbed last. Here, our homeboy's clutching his face. Here, they're taking him into the tomb after he's clutching his face. He doesn't seem to have a knife in his back yet, though. So, probably like up here is one and two. Where did Baldy enter the picture? So, they don't have a lantern yet. Okay, so this has got to be one because no lantern. Which then I'm guessing makes this two? Then they pick up a bald man somewhere, probably at Baldish General. The Balder store also, I guess, would have probably worked there. Um, this seems to have happened first, so let's call that three and then this four. And let's visualize. Are we correct? Our boy. Chad is putting our boy in that crypt. And bricking him up. Who's Chad? Giving him to the sleeper. Forever. So this is Missy and what was the other guy's name? This must be mom and dad for Ethan. Ethan's mother and father. The hell's going on? Oh, Travis interrupted him. All right, so that is clearly not number two. So Travis found out later. So maybe this is like your two. That would then make you three. And then this would be four. Boy, Chad is putting our boy in that crypt. Okay, so Missy and Dale are mom and dad. Got it. Travis is the brother. Ed is the father. Who the fuck is Chad? I'm gonna fill me in on this whole Chad thing here. It's getting a little weird. Chad, let me see. Nope, we dicked it up again. All right. So, this has got to be two, and that's got to be three, then. They interrupt Chad while he's bricking and perhaps smash his head in. So, let's make you previous, and then you go to three. There we go. Visualize this. Our boy. Yeah, we're skipping oh, this, because we already saw that. You know this is wrong. Chad, finish those bricks before he wakes up. Oh, here comes... Oh, Ethan jabbed him in the face! You know, say what you want about this Ethan Carter kid. I'm pretty sure he's the harbinger Chad, of the apocalypse, but the kid's got spunk. Got to give him credit. Have been yeah, help, helping you murder his son. You are who, by the way, Chad? Are they going to kill Dale? Uh, we've mucked it then. Okay, so that, that bit is the final chunk. And then we got this story completely out of whack. So this is part five. So we've got one, two, three... We're good. Let's visualize. Okay, we can skip this. You know this, is this guy's wrong, trying to Chad. brick Ethan up. Ethan crawls up the stairs, gets him in the eye with the fucking... Was that a trowel? It was a trowel in the eye. I thought he got him with a thumb, but that was straight up murderous. Or was that the knife? Chad, let me see it. Get the hell away from me. Did Ethan stab this dude's eye out? No, I think he just got him with like a thumb in the eye or maybe a brick. Chad and Dale are gonna scrap here. Yep. Chad, get off of him. He's your oh, it's Uncle Chad. All right. Oh, she shanked Uncle Chad in the fucking neck. So what happened? Ethan then, while they were busy stabbing each other, made his way out of the tomb and escapes to his brother Travis, who then tries to tie him to the fucking railroad tracks. What the hell's going on? Where's Ethan? The one who sleeps must not sleep. Your Uncle Chad is dead. Wait. Ethan. So Ethan escaped, but the crows dropped fucking dime on him. You know, being a stoolie is mostly known for pigeons, crows. I gotta say, you guys are acting a little bit out of character if you're gonna stool on a guy. Typically, it's, it's reserved for pigeons, not crows. So we can find out what happened to Ethan after they tried to brick him up That's in the cemetery. Right. Ethan's our boy. Dad, 
I need to get into the mine. What? Mine? Mine? My, my key. I, I don't have Why do you need to go to the mine? I guess I'll use the tunnel near the gate. Just, just keep mom away from me, all right? She's sick. We were all sick. Are they, Ethan? Or is it maybe you who is sick and they who are the cure? You ever think about that, Ethan? Huh? A sleeper must not sleep. Ethan disturbed something. Whatever it was, it got out into the air and into the minds of his family. Mm -hmm. It's the many mouthed mother of madness. It's fine, though. I mean, she, once she's gotten uh, her fill of sanity, she usually crawls back to the mine, curls up in a little ball, sleeps for another 10,000 years. It's not really that big of a deal. Sure, she's going to devour a couple small towns. I mean, that's going to happen with your eldritch abominations. Some small towns are going to have to be sacrificed. But it seems like this one's already pretty much on its way to being dead. And really, Paul Prospero, I think you're just a cup here kind of being a, a bit of a shit disturber. This really seems like the sort of thing you ought to maybe just let go, pal. Okay, so this curves back down around to the path. It goes back to town. So... I mean, fuck it. If we're going to go look for a mine, this sort of seems like a mining trail to Pete. Let's go see what's up here. I'm sure it will in no way be fucking horrible. Just a uh, dead end with some trees, huh? All right. I do appreciate that the folks at the astronauts have given me plenty of, like, little cubby holes and niches in which to... Uh, Sort of sate my desire for exploring by just dashing into them. And I can just kind of like go wander off into the middle of nowhere. It doesn't actually go anywhere, but it keeps my idleness entertained for like 98, you know, like between 90 seconds, and two minutes. Just go off, have a bit of a wander. Go off, have a bit of a wander, eh, governor? And that's right, sometimes the path not taken is the best path you could have possibly took. Of course, you won't know that because you didn't take the path. And we're going to ask Robert Frost about that, and he'll tell you he's full of shit. It's over here, though. Just a big old dead end. Well, once again, the astronauts have uh, cleverly taken advantage of my explorative nature to make me go to a place I didn't need to be. Padding, ladies and gentlemen. Padding. Need your game to be a little bit longer than it is? Trying to get an extra 20 to 30 minutes of playtime out of your overall narrative experience? Add in some places that don't go anywhere so, and just make it look intriguing and secret so that players will go crawl down them. Again, I'm not I'm not firing shots. I actually like this. It helps pad out the experience. Gives me something to do. When I need a break from the horror that is the story, you know, I can be like, hey, I'm just going to go wander over here and see if I can get up these rocks. The level of exploration available in the Vanishing of Ethan Carter, I'm actually surprised. There's a lot of these places I can go that I would not have expected. Oh, this is not cool, though, guys. This is a, this is a, you just invisible walled me. This is the first time in the whole game I've felt invisible walled right here. You shouldn't let me climb this high up the hill if you're going to put an invisible wall. You got to put it down lower on the slope so it feels like the hill is stopping me. Not some fucking invisible barrier summoned by the boneless one at the behest of our Uncle Chad. Thanks, Uncle Chad. Put the invisible wall there so now I can't fall off the cliff anymore. Oh, that what Uncle Chad. Have to say? Concerned about safety. You'd be surprised by how little they know. The dead can't explain what it means to be dead. I wouldn't really... They walk downstairs uh -huh. that disappear beneath their feet, okay. headed for some bright blade of memory they'll never reach. Okay. That's real deep, Prospero. This guy. I kind of feel like Paul Prospero mixed his, uh, missed his calling. And that really what he should have been doing is one of those guys who writes the slogans for motivational posters. That one right there, it should have just been like death with a picture of a dead guy in a coffin. And it could have been like reaching for a glade of bright memory you'll never reach. And then you could hang it on the wall at the office and everybody be like, uh, you know, Pete, that's not... We're, we're really usually going to see one that says something like determination or uh, perseverance or something a little more uplifting and be like, hey, everybody dies, bro. Everybody dies. Doesn't got to be sad, though. What if you're uh, just going to go wade into a glade of bright memory? You ever think about that? Then they call you an emo freak and ask how much My Chemical Romance you listened to this week. And you have to say, well, you know, probably like their entire catalog. I like my MCR, what can I say? 
really pete their entire catalog even the weird album that they published on like amazon you know what yeah i did actually that album's pretty good the light behind your eyes is a great song then they take the plaque down one week while you're on vacation they'll be like you know it was just i'm sorry i'm sorry pete it was just too morbid we took it down fine whatever just put up your one that says like grace and then has a thing about how it's useful to maintain it when under pressure so if we are ever going to a mine, though, this is definitely the way down to the fucking mines, right? This is it. I'm starting to feel a little bit of seven dwarfs here. I'm waiting to see if, like, Doc and Happy and Slappy and Jappy show up and start oh, coming around. Jappy, by the way, was like the most racist dwarf Disney ever invented. Why are there so many potential crossroads that all lead to the same mine? All right, well, these two look like they go down to a mine, so of course I'm gonna have to go back the other way and see where the other path goes because I just can't resist trying to go. The, my contrary nature forces me to always go to the place where I'm not supposed to be. Although in this case, I may accidentally have gone to the place I was supposed to be first, and that's gonna make me real salty. Yeah, there's some kind of hidden force that glade back here with the thing. Enter. You know what? No. I'm going to come down here and look around a little bit first. It said he could use the secret tunnel by the gate. I'm assuming this is the gate. And we only know about the secret tunnel because we have experienced the narrative bit that let us unlock that. If we had wandered up here... I'm curious if we had wandered up here without exploring that story beat, if we would be able to go find that hole in which to enter it. Find that hole in which to enter it. The Perfidious Pete subtitle of my autobiography. Perfidious Pete, looking for that hole. Oh. Trickle boxes, all right. So now we're just out in the ass into nowhere though, right? I mean, we're just in the middle of fuck all nowhere. Oh, the, 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 the light off the lake. Oh, man. Every time I think I've become inured to the, like, graphics and the fantastic level of detail and work that was put into the visuals in Ethan Carter, I stumble across something like this, and then I just, like, bam, mind re-blown again. Just when I think my mind's as blown as it can possibly be, I stumble across this, and except for the bloom effect, which is a little overbearing, this is freaking gorgeous. Just a quick tip from Perfidious Pete to any potential game developers out there. If you're going to use Bloom in your product, that's fine. Bloom is cool. But whatever level of Bloom you think is appropriate, like when you think you've really got the Bloom dialed in and it's dead bang right where it needs to be, lower it by 25% from that figure and you'll actually have hit the magic spot. I'm not hating on Bloom. I'm just saying, you know what? You're oversaturating a little bit. Wherever you think the magic spot is... Drop it down by a quarter, and you'll actually have found the magic spot. Same thing goes for Perfidious Pete's sexual encounter. Wherever you think the magic spot is, Pete, you have no fucking idea what you're doing. Go about 25% lower on the mons there, and you'll actually have hit the spot you're looking for. So do we really want to enter this mine? I mean, we really don't feel like we've got any other options. So this is Ethan's secret tunnel. Yeah, we're really going to have to wriggle through there. This seems very precarious for a full-grown man to attempt, but Paul Prospero is nothing if not foolhardy in the pursuit of his quarry, so let's do it. I'm surprised we didn't get wedged halfway through and then somebody had to come solve the mystery of Paul Prospero's dead body stuck in a rock. Can I go back? Absolutely not. Oh good, we're here forever. Well, that's delightful, because you know, there actually was a chain on the gate when we went down there and looked at it, and we don't have a key to it, so unless there's a set of bolt cutters in this mine, I think we're probably going to starve to death. See what your Miskatonic training has gotten you into, Paul Prospero? Oh, sure, it found a way to get you into the mine, but that also was one of those things man was not meant to know, because now you can never escape. We're, we're here forever now. See, we live in this mine. Let's go, uh... Let's go see if we're going to meet exactly the fate that I expect us to meet. Oh, look, the mine's locked and we have no way to open the door. What a surprise. So we're going to die in a cave. All right, then. That's fantastic. But you know what? I think our spelunking death 
it's going to have to wait until next episode. And honestly, you know what, the astronauts, if I really wanted to die in a cave underground while spelunking, I could have just played Spelunky. I'm terrible at that game. It would only take it like 90 seconds to three minutes maximum to kill me. Could have been playing Spelunky. If you enjoyed this episode, though, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to see more bizarre musings while I wander around in search of a way out of this cave, you might consider subscribing as well. Post new episodes of Ethan Carter every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Right now, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon, assuming I'm not a desiccated skeleton of a man who starved to death leaning against this wall and somebody... Uh, you know what? We'll probably see you again as the next inspector coming to solve the mystery of the missing Paul Prospero. Probably what's going to happen. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.